Hello and uh, welcome to Washington DC in the United States. During three days, Army Recognition Editorial Team will cover the events to showcase the latest innovation and technologies about American defense industry. Today, we will focus to the new product unveiled by General Dynamics Land System. We have also today an exclusive interview about the Abrams X, a new technology demonstrator about future generation of main battle tank. Yeah, my name is Timothy Reese. I'm the Director of Business Development at General Dynamics Land Systems, and this is our Abrams Act Technology Demonstrator. And by that term, I mean we have taken an Abrams tank as it exists today, and we have added a whole bunch of new technologies to it that we have heard from the Army they're interested in, and we want to get feedback from the Army about which ones they find useful and which ones they don't find useful. One of the things we heard is the Army would like to go to a three-man crew or three-person crew instead of a four-person crew. So we took all three uh, crew positions, put them down front, which allowed us to make the turret smaller, shorter, lighter, and reducing the overall weight of the tank. By moving the crew to the front, we also moved the fuel tanks that are normally there, and we have a hybrid electric power pack in the rear, replacing the turbine that's on the Abrams today. It's a technology demonstrator. I would not call it the next variant because we don't yet know what the Army wants to do first. They may like all of the things that are on here or maybe only some of the things that are here. We're trying to get feedback from them to determine what we do next. It has a 120 millimeter cannon, so the same caliber of cannon as the Abrams, a different cannon system itself with an auto loader, so there's no human loading the round in the back. We've also replaced the 50 caliber machine gun on the turret with a 30 caliber lightweight cannon to see if that extra firepower is something that is desired by the Army. And we have trophy active protection system for 360 degree protection. We have a, a laser warning detector. We also have an ATGM shot detector, uh, optical and radar, and then some of the sensors control the switchblade munitions which are launched and remotely operated by the crew. Nobody in the turret. The member of the crew can get up in the turret to fix a problem if something uh, goes wrong, but normally the crew fights from all three in the hull. They sit side by side like a crew in an aircraft, and they share a common set of displays in which they maintain their situational awareness and operate all the systems of the tank. We, uh, we expect them to like some of the things we did and not like some of the other things and give us some feedback and direction so that we can evolve it to the next stage and advance it to another test or development exercise. My name is Bob Geddert. I work at General Dynamics Land Systems, and Stryker Leonidas is our technology demonstrator for integrating high power microwave systems on our Stryker platform. The Stryker platform is really what we believe is the Army's SHORAD system of choice, so short range air defense. And we've got other programs going on with short range air defense, SHORAD programs, and we feel like that layered defense that you need, the high power microwave provides that with that near threat of defeating swarms. All the technical capabilities of the original Striker will be maintained. We just changed the backside of the vehicle to integrate the high power microwave system. Uh, it, it uses the same power that the, the vehicle generally generates. There's nothing special. And the system can operate continuously, essentially with an unlimited magazine. The purpose of the vehicle is essentially for um, defeat of swarm drones. It can defeat wing drones, uh, quadcopter drones, and swarms. Um, which is something that is new to the force. So we've teamed with Epirus. Epirus has developed gallium nitride LRAMs, uh, line replaceable amplifier modules, and that system essentially is built into an array, and those microwaves are sent out upon command in a 60 degree swath to take down drones. So the system essentially works with those, those microwaves. When they attack the drone, they essentially will get into the electronics and short out the system. My name is Ray Moldovan. I'm a business development manager with General Dynamics Land Systems. And behind me is our T-Rex Breachers vehicle. So it has a breaching payload. It's actually two systems that you see behind me. 
mobility platform is the heart of it. It's the robot, and T-Rex stands for Track Robot 10 Ton. It's a 10 ton vehicle weight class. On top of it is the breaching payload. Some of the features of the payload include a Miklik, that's a mine clearing line charge, uh, that's at the top of the payload. And then we've got a manipulator arm for obstacle reduction, and then a blade for lane clearing and surface laid mine clearing, those kinds of things. You know, how do we get that capability to the field? We need a mobility platform. So our mobility platform, the T-Rex, is an electric hybrid vehicle. The vehicle has a top speed of about 45 miles an hour, dash speed, uh, sustained operation, 25 to 35 miles per hour, and it has a range, uh, an organic range, of about 300 miles to maintain pace with any military formation. Well, so the expectation is that this is multi-mission. So the first thing is that it's a highly modular execution, and one of the things that we can see behind me is the fact that the payload itself is raised up about six inches off of the deck. The Striker X is a series series hybrid electric drive vehicle uh, that we've added into to increase our power. Uh, also give us the ability to do silent watch and silent mobility like we've never done before. Um, right now we've increased that capability quite a bit. Uh, we've also, this vehicle here only runs on batteries today, so it's creepy quiet. So when you, you never really hear it coming, which is something we've been promoting. Also, we've increased our ability to do 360 situational awareness. We've added, you know, cameras around the outside. So when the soldiers e exit the vehicle, you know, there's a lot of ways they can see they know what the issue is before they exit the vehicle. By increasing the power, increasing our computing capability, we've also increased the ability to do unmanned teaming. So we can do, you know, we can control drones and robots and things before. I mean, you can see we have drones on top. There's a Puma, v Puma above us, you know, so we're able to do that and see the environment in the battlefield we've never been able to do before. So one of the main differences, like I said, we have a we have a series hybrid engine in here now. Which uh, so we we pulled out the C9 engine that was in here before. We've moved the driver who used to sit right here back next to the commander. So we have a, a dual cockpit type configuration. So that's why you see the two hatches on the top. So now the driver and the commander sit right next to each other. They both have similar controls. We could flop back and forth and let the driver drive or the commander drive. And it also has the ability to to increase the communication between the driver and commander, where in the past they were separated by you know the fire wall and just using headsets now the commander or the driver can look over and see what the commander sees on his screen and be able to react based on that.